James Edward Walsh was born the second of nine children to Mary Concannon and William Edward Walsh in Cumberland, Maryland on April 30th, 1891. James Edward's humor and writing ability developed early. His father sent him off to parochial school when he and his brother bedeviled their teacher by, as he said, reciting our lessons standing on our heads. After graduating from Mount St. Mary's College at age 19, James worked two years as a timekeeper in a steel mill where, as he described it, the world as a sort of fairyland came to something like its true light. Finally, I found that when I surrendered myself to the thought of the priesthood, a sort of holy joy filled my soul. Both his mother and father were overjoyed at his decision to be a missionary priest. He wrote, As soon as I read the title, American Catholic Foreign Mission Seminary, I felt at once that this was what I had been waiting for. James entered the first class of Marinol in 1912, and on December 7, 1915, he became the second priest ordained in the society. Three years later, he was assigned to China. That first remarkable mission group consisted of fathers Thomas Frederick Price, Francis Xavier Ford, Bernard Myers, and James Edward Walsh. They departed for Kwangtung, China on September 8, 1918. One day, the young missionary saw a weary boy leaning on his hoe who peered at him. He was immediately filled with what he later described as a fiery surge of love for everything the boy represented. He remembered what he had read in an essay, Come to me often in your barefoot squalor and look at me from out of those hopeless and bewildered eyes. Do not let me forget that vision, but stay by me and preside over my dreams. Teach me that souls are people and remind me everlastingly that they are magnificent people like you. In 1919, upon the death of Father Thomas Frederick Price, a Marino co-founder, Father Walsh, the missioner to whom the Chinese Catholics gave the name of Hua Li Son, which means Pillar of Truth, became the superior of the Marino Mission in China. Committed to developing a self-sufficient Chinese church, Father Walsh founded Little Flower Minor Seminary in 1926 and a congregation of Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1927. At the age of 36, Pope Pius XI named him the first bishop of the Vicariate of Kong Moon. He was ordained bishop at the shrine of St. Francis Xavier on Sanction Island on May 22, 1927. As a new bishop, Bishop Walsh said to his missioners, I am the least among you. Look upon me as your servant. I am made bishop chiefly to help you. If my help takes the form of direction, I hope you will realize it is intended to help just the same. But I think we understand each other. We are a happy family. He also told them, the task of a missionary is to go to a place where one is not wanted but needed, and to remain there until he is not needed but wanted. Bishop Walsh returned to Marino, New York in 1936, following the death of Bishop James Anthony Walsh. In April of that year, he was elected the second Superior General of Marino. His 10-year term from 1936 to 1946 spanned the difficult years of World War II. During 1940 and 1941, at the request of Japanese authorities and the acceptance of the U.S. State Department, Bishop Walsh and his Vicar General Father James Drott gave their services as an unofficial channel for negotiations in the interests of avoiding war between the two powers. 
Though the effort failed, as did all other efforts, Bishop Walsh defended it as an expression of Christian responsibility in working for peace. During his term as Society Superior, Bishop Walsh supervised Mary Knoll's first mission efforts to Latin America and Africa. He visited Latin America in 1942 to lay the groundwork for sending Mary Knoll missionaries. Addressing those whom the Society was sending to Latin America, he affirmed, We are going to South America as missioners, but we are not going as exponents of any so-called North American civilization. We will endeavor to preach the Catholic faith in areas where priests are scarce and mission work is needed. But as regards the elements of true civilization, we expect to receive as much as we have to give. In 1946, he made the decision to send Marino missionaries to work in Africa. After his term of office, Bishop Walsh returned to China in 1948 at the invitation of the Chinese bishops to serve as executive secretary of their newly organized Catholic Central Bureau in Shanghai to coordinate the church's missionary efforts throughout the country. When the communists came to power in 1949, all foreign clergy were harassed and pressured to leave. The government ordered Bishop Walsh's bureau closed in 1951 and placed Bishop Walsh and his associates under continual surveillance. Though prodded to leave China, he determined he should stay. When Marino's superiors expressed concern for his safety, Bishop Walsh betrayed a trace of his Irish temper. To put up with a little inconvenience at my age is nothing. Besides, I am a little sick and tired of being pushed around on account of my religion. On October 18, 1958, Bishop Walsh was arrested and charged with a currency violation and of being a spy for the United States. For a year and a half he was subjected to daily interrogations and in 1960 was finally sentenced to 20 years imprisonment and interned in Ward Road Prison in Shanghai. During those years in jail, he received no news reports and only one non-Chinese visitor. His brother, William C. Walsh, the former Maryland State Attorney General, was allowed to visit him in 1960. Without advanced notice, he was freed from Shanghai's prison hospital after serving almost 12 years of his sentence. Clad in rumpled khaki trousers and a faded checkered shirt, he walked across Hong Kong's Lo Wu Bridge to freedom on July 10, 1970. After his sudden and much celebrated release at age 79, Bishop Walsh proclaimed his innocence. The Chinese government provided his basic needs, he said, but he had endured periods of harassment and suffering in prison. It was essentially hard to bear the monotony of daily confinement, of waking up each morning and trying to plan how I would occupy my day so as to maintain my sanity and ideals as a priest and missioner to the Chinese people. But the bishop held no bitterness towards those who condemned him. I just never could feel angry with any Chinese, he said. I felt that way almost from the day I first set foot in China in 1918. And it has just grown stronger with the years. Even during my imprisonment, I love the Chinese people. On his return to the States, Bishop Walsh stopped in Rome, where he was received in an emotional audience by Pope Paul VI. The pontiff told the veteran missioner, you have been a witness, authentic and simple, in joy and in sorrow, then in suffering and humiliation, and finally in separation from the people you love so much. For all of this, we thank you on behalf of the entire Church of Christ. After his release from the Shanghai prison, Bishop Walsh resided at the main seminary at Mary Knoll, New York. His days were quiet and orderly with his prayers and mass, his readings and frequent strolls. 
The evening of his life was one of personal dignity. The priest, the gentleman, a bother to no one, an inspiration to all. While retired at Marino, he ordained two classes of missioners, the class of 1971 and the class of 1977, and preside over their departure ceremony. Bishop Walsh's motto in China was, Suffer the little children to come unto me. It best expresses his deep abiding vocation to Marino. He wrote, I choose you, sang in my heart, as I looked at my awkward farmer boy, perfect picture of the underprivileged soul, the overlooked and the overworked, the forgotten and despised. Shine on, farmer boy, symbol to me of the thousand million like you who drew the Son of God from heaven to smooth and bless your weary anxieties and puzzled brows. I choose you and dedicate myself to you, and I ask no other privilege but to devote the energies of my soul to such as you. Shine on, farmer boy. Above all, Bishop Walsh was the dedicated missioner, deep of faith, full of humor, independent of manner. He will be remembered by Mary Nollers as the bishop who never uttered an unkind word about his captors. He said, The highest dream that can stir the heart of man is to squander it in the charity of Christ for the souls of brother men. Completing 66 years as a priest and 54 years as a bishop, Bishop James Edward Walsh died peacefully at Maryknoll, New York on July 29, 1981. He is buried in Maryknoll Cemetery at Maryknoll, New York.